Yeah, and I hope you can you guys can share my I can can see my screen now. Uh, una sa lahat, maraming salamat sa pag-imbita sa akin. Um, my talk will be about personal digital safety, uh, privacy, security, and anonymity. So I hope you uh, get something from this in um, in connection as well dun sa uh, unang speaker natin kay, um, kay Sir, dun sa mga sinabi niya about, about for example, home automation, right? um, networking, um hopefully ma-connect niyo rin yan sa dalawa right so who am i um nagkaroon naman na ng introduction ito so very well made introduction i'll just repeat some of it uh, my name is ben right my name is ben um self proclaimed special generalist open stuff advocate um activist data activist i work primarily in the openness data geospatial and technology fields. I am currently data training lead for the Open Knowledge Foundation. OKF is an international not-for-profit not organization working towards building a fair, free, and open future. I'm also the proprietor for BNHR or Benhur. It's an open source, open data, and data literacy um, consulting business that I have. And lastly, I am the chief technology officer of Smart City a uh, tech nonprofit that I co-founded. It's probably the first tech nonprofit in the Philippines. We're focusing on smart city solutions, but instead of purely tech solutions, we're looking at it from a citizen-centric and open data, open by default, open source, open hardware, you know, perspective, right? So, kanina may nagtanong dun sa um, presentation is sir, about uh, certifications, right? Um, Smart City is actually partnered uh, in, in the Philippines with LPI, the Linux Professional Institute. So if you've heard of Linux before, if you've used Linux, um, if you're from IT, you would probably be working with Linux at one point in your life. Um, LPI offers professional certifications on uh, Linux, BSD, DevOps, and I think meron silang bago ngayon, which are web essentials. So if you're interested in that, uh, you can contact us then about it or contact me about it, or contact you see si Saps about it. Um, Smart City is one of the partners of LPI in the Philippines, right? So yun, um, if you're more, if you're interested about uh, more of the things that I do, um, who I'm affiliated with, ano yung mga pinagkakaabalahan ko sa buhay, you can find me online, uh, Facebook and website, bnhr.xyz, on Twitter, YouTube, BNHR, DOT, XYZ. So uh, if other things, na, if you find some things interesting about what I, what I talk about, about the work that I do, pwede nyo hanapin dun, right? So first things first, siguro napansin nyo dun sa introduction ko, I'm not a cybersecurity expert or professional. That's not my field, right? Um, so hindi, hindi, yung education ko and my training hasn't, been on you know, purely cybersec, um, but I am for a very long time. I've been a practitioner and uh, a staunch advocate of personal cybersecurity, digital privacy, and other digital rights that we have, including your right to repair, your right to free and open knowledge, your right to free and open source software. So for the longest time, I've, I've been advocating for that. I've been practicing that. And what that means is this talk won't really be about you know, enterprise or corporate cybersecurity kasi iba yung umaga, you'll tackle that differently. Iba yung approach when you're talking about enterprise level, um, corporate level cybersecurity. Um, mas nuanced, mas maraming, mas maraming kailang i iisipin ng mga bagay-bagay. Um, plus, syempre merong uh, internally may mga policies yung mga uh, yung mga corporations, meron silang legal compliance, Hindi natin pag-uusapan yun. We'll, we'll talk more about your individual security and privacy in the digital world, um, right? So, siguro na tanong nyo, is this talk for me? If if you were, if you were, if you were, um, kumaga interested or if you were thinking na um, mas enterprise or corporate yung approach dito, probably not. But, you know, if, if you're interested in learning how you can protect yourself in your information access, if you're somewhat anxious or concerned that you know entities 
might be gathering your data about you or building models you know of you based on your digital activities your browsing preferences um kung ano yung mga tinitingnan mo sa Facebook sa social media ano yung mga chine check out mo sa Shopee um sa Lazada paano ka ano yung mga pinupuntahan mo um <laughs> based sa location ano mo location information right um business surveillance targeted ads digital fingerprinting If you're concerned about that and you want to be able to leave as little you know, digital footprint as possible, and also if you're okay with sacrificing, you know, just a bit, siguro, of your convenience for for pri- for more privacy. If you've answered yes to at least one of this, and this is for you, you'll I'll talk more about these things as we go along um, this afternoon or this morning to afternoon's uh, talk. Right. So, probably na isip yun rin. Uh, but then, ba wala naman ako itatago. I have nothing to hide. Why? Why should I care about this? And this isn't um this isn't new to the digital to the digital world. Right. Kahit sa analog world or um sa sa physical real world, maririn din yun to sa mga tao. Uh, especially when it comes to mga um mga mga batas, for example, mga bagay na uh, somehow invasive of privacy. Sinasabi nila, pag wala ka namang itatago, hindi mo dapat, hindi ka dapat matakot or no, no, you shouldn't care too much about that. But that's wrong. And I'll tell you why. We, sh- we shouldn't equate you know, privacy with secrecy. Lagi nga sinasabi. The basic, you know, one of the basic analogies for this is lahat naman tayo alam kung ano yung ginagawa natin sa CR, sa banyo. Minsan nga sinasabi pa natin kung ano yung gagawin natin. Diba? Jingle mo na ako. Yan, right? Pero sinasarong pa natin yung pinto. Pag nagsi-CR tayo. It's not because gusto natin bang secretive. Siguro other people or gusto lang bang masikreto kung ano yung ginagawa nila sa, sa banyo. But most of the time, it's because we want privacy. Right? You know, don't equate privacy with secrecy. Iba yun. And you have to understand the fact na our right to privacy hasn't always been there. Right? May mga taong lumaban para sa right to privacy mo from your right to privacy on the offline world until now, your right to privacy sa digital world. It should be an inalienable right. Ibig sabihin, hindi pwedeng tanggalin yan sa'yo. Uh, being human means ha- having the right to to being a private person, right? Hindi kailangang malaman ng ibang tao yung mga bagay tungkol sa'yo without your consent. And that should not change just because, you know, we live in a digital age. Hindi dahil sobrang connected na natin ngayon sa lahat ng baga, you have internet of things, you have social media, You have the internet, right? Hindi kailangang i-compromise yung privacy natin for that. Yeah. Okay, so still with me? Hopefully, yes. Hopefully, um, medyo nag-idea kayo what this talk will be about and ano yung things that would be interesting for you. So before we dive into parang my tips on how to secure yourself online, how to become more digitally private, <laughs> how to become more secure, and more anonymous, I'll just like to talk about five things first, which for me, sobrang importante even before you deal about technical stuff. First one is, you can only do so much as an individual. Privacy and security are shared responsibilities. Hindi lang nasa yo yung burden to be private and secure. Of course, malaking bagay pag ikaw mismo, you, um, you do things, gumagawa ka ng mga bagay to ensure that you're private and secure. But at the end of the day, hindi lang ikaw yung tao sa mundo. Right? It's a shared responsibility with the community, with the people around you, with your society, and of course with the state, uh, yung, yung estado. Kasi no matter how private and secure you are, if yung mga kasama mo sa bahay ay hindi secure, yung mga kaibigan mo ay hindi secure, meron kang mga kakilala na nagpo-post ng information nila online, um, na lalaro ng mga larong kailangan mag-take ng picture para maging matanda, para maging bata, nag-answer ng quizzes on social media, and you're connected to them, they are, uh, pa, they are a threat vector. Kung baga, vector sila ng possible um, compromise sa sa'yo as an individual. And at the same time, even even no matter how private or or secure you are, if walang if walang mga bagay na sinet up yung state to protect you 
to actually allow you to be secure and private, wala rin mangyayari. Whereas if the state itself or if society itself is the one doing the compromising for you, right? Being being spied on by um by forces na hindi mo alam, hindi mo kilala. Wala kang magagawa sa ganun, right? So it's it's there's only so much you can do. Right? This is a shared responsibility. Oh, so it takes a village. It takes a village to to be able to become private and secure. And what what I what I mean about that is yung sinabi ko kanina nga. Pero don't don't lose hope because there are things you can do that will help ensure na you have that village with you. First one is be an advocate, right? Inform and educate those around you about digital security. Try to convince them to be more secure online. Um, I've done this. I've tried this you know, for for some of my um, contacts and friends. Uh, I've introduced Signal as a messaging application instead of uh, Facebook Messenger, Viber. Um, and yung iba, ano naman, um, open naman suggestions but you have to be patient you have to be patient with people not people won't always um accept your suggestions or at the same time some, sometimes matatagalan sila before ma, ma appreciate or ma realize yung um yung value nga ng pagiging digitally private or digitally secure but you have to be patient with them um at the end of the day it's better for both of you if pareho kayong secure and um and and private and sometimes anonymous online uh, also we speak up and you know push back against laws regulations rules that can possibly erode your digital freedoms right now uh, we have yeah, i have to remember um your right your our right to digital privacy um that can be eroded right by laws by regulations it require kang mag-register using your real name even though hindi naman totally required right uh, things like that medyo iffy yun when it comes to your digital security and privacy um and at the same time you know support organizations that seek to preserve and fight for your digital freedoms or again you know, be a volunteer for these organizations become an advocate really second thing it's impractical and oftentimes impossible to protect all your data from everyone all the time, right? It's more important is you to understand the threats you face and how you can counter them. And this is where threat modeling, what's known as threat modeling is, uh, is involved. Threat modeling, it's not just for your personal, you know, personal security. This is something that even corporate um, and enterprise level um, cybersecurity you know, professionals do. You, you model yung threat. Mamaya, pag mas pag-uusapan natin yan, well, ngayon actually. Um, so what's a threat model? A threat model is basically a, a list, right? It's the most possible probable threats of your security and privacy endeavors. Bakit yung most probable? Kasi yun nga, we're working on the assumption that it's impossible for us to actually protect ourselves ourselves from, from, ano, from um, yung mga pinaka- yung lahat lahat ng pwedeng maging threat vector sa atin right um lahat ng vulnerabilities lahat ng adversaries natin but we can uh, always try to secure ourselves against yung pinaka posible uh, na maging na maging adversary natin or maging threat to our security and privacy for example if you're an investigative journalist this might be protecting yourself against the entity you're uh, you're investigating if you're a company's manager, this might be protecting yourself from, you know, a hacker, a black hat, na gusto lang uh, iran somewhere yung 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 company nyo, or maybe even someone hired by competition to get, you know, uh, to do corporate espionage. And if you're an average citizen, maybe interested ka in hiding your data from large tech corporations. So these are all valid threat models. And when Kung nagtatanong kayo, how, how do I create my threat model? There's a very simple a way provided by privacyguides.org uh, where you just answer you know, five questions. Right? What do you want to protect? Who do you want to protect it from? Uh, how likely is it that uh, you will need to protect it? And how bad, are the, how bad are the consequences if you fail? And how much trouble are you willing to go 
to go through, right? To be able to prevent the pot potential consequences. One example that they give is protecting your belongings. So something that's not totally digital. Something na all of us, kahit wala kang sa computer, ma maintindihan mo. You, you're in your home, you're trying to, you want to be able to protect yung, yung mga bagay niyo, mga gamit mo sa bahay. So, first question, what do I want to protect? Ano yung bagay na gusto mong um, isecure or protectahan? In this case, this could be things like your jewelry, electronics, important documents, photographs, right? Gusto mong, gusto mong isecure yung mga bagay na yun. Sino yung um, adversaries mo? Who do you want to protect it from? In this case, pwede mga magnanakaw, right? Pwede rin namang roommate. If you live with a roommate na hindi mo, not really hindi mo kakilala but not related to you, or it could even be guests. You know, people coming to your house, they might, you know, oh, a possible threat. Yung second question. The third question is, how likely is it that you will need to protect it? Here, you you think about context. You know, meron bang history ng um, pagnanakaw dun sa area nyo? Um, Nag, do you live sa isang lugar kung saan every other day mayroong nananakawan? Gaano ka trustworthy yung neighbors mo? Um, your guests, your, your, your roommates, kilala mo ba sila? Um, ano yung background nila? Nag-background check ka ba? And gaano ka-capable? Or gaano ka-galing? Gaano ka-runong? Yung mga posibleng maging adversaries mo or magiging threats dun sa mga gamit mo sa bahay. Fourth question you should answer is how bad are the consequences if I fail? In this case, pwede mong sabihin, meron ka ba mga bagay na hindi mo kayang palitan kahit ano mangyari? It could be sentimental, it could be practical, pero something na um, hindi mo pwedeng, hindi mo kayang palitan, right? Um, irreplaceable na mga bagay. And pwede mo rin isipin, may insurance ka ba? I mean, you put insurance on your, for example, things in your, in your house, on your car, pag nanakaw siya, pag uh, may nangyari sa kanya, um, meron ka bang fallback na ganun. And then the last question you answer is, you know, how much are you willing to go through to try to prevent yung consequences na to? Oh, willing ka bang mahirapan ng konti? You know, willing to buy a safe, willing to buy something? Can you afford a CCTV system? Um, things like that. So once you answer all these five questions, um, according to privacy guides, um, you would have an idea, right? You would have an idea which would then lead to a strategy against yung threat mo, yung threat model mo. So if you want, you can, you know, you can spend the next few minutes uh, going to bit.ly uh, three dog boy. Uh, Jack in one. So 3DB JI one. Delta Bravo India one. So um, you should be able to write down it's a jam board. You should be able to write down you know what you think are threat models. Um, it would be nice if you could you know if you could do that and tignan natin siya mamaya towards the end of the ano towards the towards the end of the of the talk kung ano yung mga naisip yung uh, threat model sa inyo so there's just five questions there as i mentioned what do you want to protect who do you want to protect it from how likely is it to, that you would uh, know how likely is it that um kailangan niyo siyang uh, protektahan how bad are the consequences if you fail All right And last but not the least, how much trouble are you willing to actually go through to prevent those potential ano, um, consequences, right? So yun lang. Um, you can try to look at that. Um, habang hindi masyado interesting for you yung ibang sinasabi ko, you can think about your threat model. Uh, just try natin, tingnan natin mamaya kung ano yung mga naisip yung um, threat model sa inyo. Uh, so another thing that you have to understand, there's no such thing as fully protected, just, you know, higher, 
higher protection or better protection, but never full protection. And the reason for that is no matter, you know, how secure your system is, it will always be hackable. Both from, um, both from a technological perspective, uh, for example, uh, what we recall day zero, you know, day zero threats, mga hindi na patch before yung release. Ando na siya, <laughs> even before. Boom. Um, so mga day zero threats, you can't do anything about that. Um, as long as, you know, it's a system, it's hackable. And hindi lang from the technological perspective, right? Um, I mentioned na ni, uh, uh, ni sir when I was um, um, ni, uh, Sir Mike kanina towards the last part nung, ano niya, nung talk. It's about social engineering, right? Even if, even if sobrang hard and sobrang secure ng system mo, meron pa rin yung weak point. And that weak point are usually humans. Tayo, bilang tao. We're not faultless, right? Hindi tayo perfect. So social engineering, it's, it's basically manipulation. Right? It's psychological means to manipulate you uh, into performing actions or divulging confidential information. So if you've watched movies, some pop culture references, if you want to see how it's done, you know, Mr. Robot, if you, want, if you watch Mr. Robot, there are instances there na yung ginagawa ni na Elliot uh, and, and gang. It's actually social engineering. They're not technically, you know, typing on their keyboard, looking at their ter- multiple terminals nakabukas. I've gotten into the mainframe kind of hacking. No, it's, some of that is just actually social engineering. Asking people questions that seem harmless, but in reality, um, hindi. <laughs> right? Um, yung mga questions dati na uso online, you know, your porn star name is your, the street you grew up on, the name of your, the name of your first pet. Those are actually security questions, right? Pero hindi mo alam kung bata ka pa, or you're, old or you don't know about security questions, oh, it's fun. It's a fun game. Right? Now, you see, uh, now you see me, yung mga magicians, um, uh, a lot of the things they do dun sa pagkuha ng uh, uh, information na confidential is actually you know, a form of social engineering. And one of the most, siguro one of the most uh, popular ones, uh, The Life of Mr. Abignail, Catch Me If You Can, if, if you've seen that movie. Um, I think it was Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, one of the one of best examples, siguro, and in pop culture, reference of social engineering. You know, he, he hacked his way, he social engineered his way to being a pilot, a doctor, to having, you know, lots and lots of uh, money, right? And even became, I think, um, uh, an FBI consultant after that, uh, just because of how good how good it was. So those are pop culture references for that. If you want real world examples, a very recent one, just a few days ago, I think, a few, a week ago, um, Apple, Meta, and other uh, tech companies uh, actually shared their d- data with hackers because these hackers were pretending to be law enforcement, law enforcement officers or officials. Um, meron kasing, uh, I think it's in the US, na meron silang um, data request na that would come directly from law enforcement and uh, ang mangyayari noon would be ang mangyayari noon is parang when that occurs parang na shortcut na merong uh, may in a way may legal basis dapat para mag-share sila ng information but in this case ang ginawa ng hackers ay they pretended to be law enforcement officers sent those requests to these um companies, and they actually got a hold of the data, right? So that's social engineering. Hindi nila kailangan pasukin yung, yung databases ng mga companies na to because these are probably really hard and really good digitally secure systems, right? But, um, but humans, humans are fallible. Right? Meron, tayong, meron tayong mga um, mga 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 faults and mga issues na um, na pwede na na pwedeng i-take advantage of ng hackers right um the first thing or the fourth thing is to be prepared um most of the time 
the more secure and private you are digitally, the less convenient it is. I, um, but a lot of people use tech to, for a convenient life, but finding the right balance is really difficult. You know, everything is somehow always a trade-off between a part of your privacy and security and convenience, right? Signing up for, for systems uh, to be able to use them and sometimes doesn't make sense. For example, if you have if you have a fitness band, any kind of fitness tracker, but mo kailangan mag-sign up with your email, with your name, with your contact details para lang magamit yung application nila connected to it. Right? That's not... That, you, you can actually use it without it and there are options uh, to do that. Um, beware of the price you pay for convenience. Most of the time, people will think na, you know, I don't want to learn something new. I'm already familiar with my applications. You know, the recommended tools are too hard. Or, or to use or learn. So some people quit even before they start because you know they become overwhelmed or want to do drastic changes. But this can be avoided. Isipin nyo para lang tong nagpapapayat ka, you're learning a new skill. Um, so start, you don't, you don't want to be overwhelmed. So you take it step by step. Ganun din dito. You can do it step by step. Um, which leads me to the fifth, uh, um, fifth thing. There's no single way to approach, you know, your digital security. It's always going to be a personal journey and a matter of personal choice, right? So the best way is the one that's best for you. It's not... So yung mga sabihin ko ngayon, it might not be the best for you. You, you can... This is your own personal journey. Pwede niyong sabihin kung uh, ano, yung, ano, yung, ano yung best for you. And hopefully, makatuloy yung mga, yung mga tips ko, yung, yung threat modeling uh, with that, right? So you can always tailor fit your digital security strategy based on your own needs and capabilities. So, so as an example for um, for this for for this talk, I'll talk talk about two threat models uh, at three at three different levels. So this could be something na relevant din sa inyo. Hope, hopefully it is. So para makita nyo rin yung um, how I go about addressing um, these threats or these threat models. So I have two. The first one is protecting your personal or private information for being compromised or hacked. So this means the individual you know, uh, security. Mo. You, you want to be protected from um, possible hackers, um, vindic mga kaaway mo on social media siguro, people looking to get revenge on you, people looking to dox you, doxing, you know, for uh, divulging people's private information online. So you want to be protected from that. You want to make sure na hindi, hindi easily hackable yung, yung systems mo, yung, yung emails mo and stuff. That's your first threat. That's the first threat model. The second one is you want to avoid being trapped online or having your data collected without your consent. Again, your business uh, surveillance, uh, possible fingerprinting, and uh, no. um. Uh, targeted ads kung ayaw mo sa mga ganun bagay. Uh, we have three, uh, three, three levels just in case as I, as I mentioned kanina, hindi naman siya, ano, hindi naman siya one size fits all. So you can do with level one. These are the bare essentials. Easiest to achieve although hindi, na, hindi ganun siguro ka um, hardened yung security. Yeah, we have something uh, probably level two. It offers you more protection. It requires a bit more effort and it's a bit less convenient uh, for you. And level three, most protection, you know, most effort, also probably the least convenient. Of course, depending on your skills, depending on your capabilities, pwedeng hindi inconvenient yung level three for you. Kung sanay na, sanay na, sanay na, sanay ka. But if you're a beginner, level three will be really inconvenient. So let's start. Um, I'll talk about different things and how to tackle them. The first one is passwords. Right, we, all, we all know about passwords. We all use passwords. Some tips for level one. Do not reuse passwords. I know, uh, mas madaling alalahanin, but please do not reuse them. Because if you reuse passwords, if one of your accounts get compromised, all other accounts which have the same, which have the same credentials will be compromised. And it's so easy to compromise passwords, um, especially if you use um, a very common password. Now, there are password databases available online. And if your password is somewhere there, someone could even just brute force, right? Brute force their way into your accounts. Um, so to this, please use a password manager. Um, but my advice is not to use the one on your browser. Um, there are 
uh, cloud-based solutions like LastPass or Bitwarden. Um, why not the browser solutions? Because your browser is also hackable. Your browser is also, you know, a possible vector for, of threats. It's also a target, right? So having it somewhere else outside of your browser is is, is good, right? Lie on security questions, uh, please. Madaling malaman kung ano yung middle, middle, maiden name ng nanay mo. Madaling malaman kung saan ka nakatira nung bata ka. Madaling malaman kung sino yung best friend mo. Or any other common security questions. Um, as an example, I've, for example, example lang, hindi ko namang ginawa or baka ginawa. You don't know. But as an example, if you're trying to uh, find, you don't know anything about the person, you only know their social media account, right? You can go through their social media, find their birthday, find when they graduated, what school they graduated from. You can even find their parents' names. And, um, uh, parents' names. If you need the maiden name, you can access some databases online that are available. Um, for example, um, for example, ng COVID, agsilabasan lahat ng listahan ng mga tao sa barangay. May middle name pa yung iba dun. Yung iba minsan may contact number. So try lie on security questions. It's it's not bad. Actually, a good ano, a good idea. Not use correct answers in your security questions. Just make sure that you remember these answers. And to do that, again, second bullet, you can use your password manager to actually store your answer to security questions. Use 2FA or 2-factor authentication as much as possible. Kahit SMS, that's fine. Um, SMS 2FA, whether in use uh, authenticator applications, right? Um, like Aegis, authenticator. And in Google, may authenticator din naman, but I try to avoid Google as much as I can uh, in terms of security and privacy. Right? Avoid using your biometrics. Mas madaling i-hack yung biometrics mo. Tulog ka. Right? Someone gets a hold of you. Uh, um, physically, pwede nilang i-disable, i-unlock yung mga bagay-bagay using your biometrics. Level 2, use hardware to FA. Like uh, YubiKey. Um, of course, medyo mahal ang pagbili ng isang uh, YubiKey. But it will help you. Uh, just make sure na hindi mo siya maiwan somewhere or else you'll be locked out of your accounts or at least you'll have a hard time recovering your accounts but these are these are great actually um it requires you to actually plug in the yubikey to do to fa para kahit even if people get your password details hindi nila kayang i-access yung accounts mo without you know uh, the yubikey or other hardware uh, to fa um machines uh, last level so as i mentioned pinaka possibly inconvenient, most effort, you know, deploy your own password manager, host it on your own network or your own machine. That's easy. If you have a home lab, you have a home server, you have a computer lying around and you know how to deploy stuff, especially Bitwarden, I think meron siyang, um, uh, meron siyang Docker image that you can just uh, simply deploy. So if you know how to deploy using Docker, dali lang to. Uh, but for some people, this might not be easy. So you can actually deploy your own host your own, and it will be stored on your local machine. So, hindi siya maging hackable online, on the cloud, because it's there on your own private, you know, home network. So, yun yung level three, hosting your own. Mapapansin nyo maraming ganun. Uh, level three, host your own. Emails. Um, sobrang tinding uh, threat vector ng email. My suggestion is really use privacy respecting email providers with end to end encryption. So, end to end encryptions mean encrypted siya from the sender up to the uh, until yung, ano, until yung uh, receiver. So, walang pwede makabasa ng email mo in between, not even the service provider, right? Hindi nila pwede encrypted yung, yung emails mo sa dun. So, if someone is snoof, snooping around, um, trying to get your, um, trying to see, view your emails, hindi nila magagawa yan. Um, yeah, there are a lot of options here. Proton Mail is something that I use. There's also Tutanota. Um, please, especially for sensitive communications, um, you use these services. May, may free, may libre version or um, yeah, free version yung, yung Proton Mail. Now, in fact, for some of my business correspondences, ng personal business ko, I use Proton Mail. I use yung end-to-end -end encrypted tapos yung self-deleting emails nila for that. 
Um, I don't use Gmail for most of the uh, ibang stuff that I work work on. Pero if uh, for some of my projects and clients, of course, wala akong choice kasi Gmail yung gamit namin. Um, and also, second, use throwaway or disposable email addresses. And daming services na ganito. 10-minute mail, guerrilla mail, you know, email on deck. Para to sa mga, sa mga times na um, kailangan mo ng email address just to sign up to a service. Pero once mo lang siya gagamitin. So just use a throwaway email. Don't use your 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 personal email account. Kasi baka sobrang dami mo ng accounts online and lahat yun could possibly be hacked, could possibly, you know, be a place kung saan ma-compromise yung information mo. Um, level 2 to level 3, depending on how how much you're willing to commit, you know, use only privacy-respecting email providers. That means totally deleting your Google, Yahoo, or other email accounts. This is very difficult, especially if other people aren't really using your, ano. again, for me, I still use Google, uh, I still use Gmail because a lot of my correspondences sa ibang work that I do and clients are, are on G Suite. Messaging apps, Facebook Messenger, things like that. Um, so, uh, mahirap siyang i-level 1, 2, 3, so I'll just put them all in one, Depende kung how committed that you are you again. Um, similar to email, there are privacy respecting instant messaging options with end-to-end -end encryption. Um, use it, especially for sensitive communications uh, that you don't want people to be able to, you know, snoop or use them just use them entirely without you no know, without using the other options at all depende on gaano kayo ka committed pinaka common and pinaka easy to use would be signal uh, signal is a great you know, um instant messaging with end-to-end uh, -end encryption i think minimal tracking um and then there's delta chat which is basically just email skinned like uh an i instant messenger Try to avoid using mess uh, F Messenger, Telegram, Viber, uh, etc. Just check nyo if it's really end-to-end -end encrypted. Yung mga ano nila. Because most of the time, it's not. Right? Um, signal is, is, a, is a good start kung if you're interested in this. And try to tell people then. Oh, gamit tayo ng... Um, ano talk about digital footprint? This is... This is what you leave behind online and what can be used to actually track you and you know identify you online based on your behavior, based on the browser that you're using, based on your IP address, based on a lot of different things. So if you want to limit your digital footprint, disable Google tracking on your account, please. Uh, um, disconnect your email addresses from other unused services or delete your old accounts. And use random nicknames or fake information whenever you can if you're signing up to sys services. Uh, I know cool na magkaroon ng single handle everywhere, but that also means I can identify you kahit sa ang forum tayo magkita, kahit sa ang site tayo magkita, kasi that's your only, you know, that's your only um, uh, username or nickname that you use. So, um, level one. <laughs> Level 2 and 3, again, depending on how committed you are, can delete your Google account, you know, de-Google yourself. That's possible. I've tried. Um, compartmentalize your internet profiles or browsers, meaning, you know, use one browser for one specific purpose. It could be for social media. It could be for something na directly pertaining to your personal information. It could be um, uh, just casual browsing of the internet. So try to compartmentalize that. And if you're more interested, if you're very interested, you know, use the Tor browser. Right? Yon actually is, is one of the best um, advice that I can give. If you can, use the Tor browser for browsing. It won't be as convenient because a lot of the, uh, a lot of the stuff like um, proprietary JavaScript uh, on websites sometimes don't work well with, with Tor and you know, either privacy respecting um, uh, browsers, but if you're more interested in your privacy than a bit of convenience, that's what I can say. Social media, mahirap din to. Um, first level, try to minimize just the use of the service. Enable uh, all privacy settings and disable notifications. Um, you disable notifications, not really more on privacy. It's more about, for me, more about your mental health. Kasi no, no tips, 
pag may notice ka, you tend to check them, check them, check them until nagdo-doom scroll ka na lang lagi and wala kang hindi mo hindi mo magawang i-put down yung phone mo. Uh, I have disabled notifications on on all my phones. I only check social media when I want to check it, not when social media tells me to to check kasi may notify ako. So sometimes that means hindi ako nakasagot sa Messenger na ng mga tao nagme-message sa akin because I don't have I have notifications off on FB Messenger. I have signal notification on though. So if they want to con- <laughs> to, to contact me, contact me on signal. Social media level 2 lie. No, do not put any private information on social media including photos of your face if you really want to be private about it. Uh, prefer using progressive web applications and web app versions instead of smartphone apps. Kasi smartphone apps will track you a, a lot. Uh, yung progressive web apps, at least it's basically contained in a web app. So kung ano yung browser mo, um, browser securities mo, mas, mas makukontrol mo siya. Level 3, just don't use mainstream social media accounts. There are open source and decentralized alternatives and uh, if, you're, if you're not aware. There's Peertube uh, for YouTube. There's Mastodon for Twitter. There are also um, Facebook likes na Facebook like na mga ano na mga social media if you're interested in that there's um you can uh uh you can find it at I think privacyinfo.io mamaya may resource on on where you can find these alternatives search engines um stop using google again depende on gaano kayo ka committed stop using google yahoo or search engines that track you use a privacy respecting and non tracking search engine this is could be start page Uh, I use start page uh I use three start page dot dot go and brave um so start page it provides you almost similar 100% similar results with Google I think they use the same index pero anonymized yung search um so that means almost same results pero hindi wala hindi ka na track na ikaw yung nagse-search ng bagay na yun dot dot go um yung search history mo is saved in a non identifiable manner it also uses I think a lot of other indices aside from Google. And then yung Brave, it uses its own search. App. The results are also acceptable. It's very similar now with what you get uh, sa Google. Then again, level three, you want to be really hardcore about it. Um, Surex, self-hostable, open source, meta search engine. Host your own search engine. Connect with other people that are hosting their own search, search engines. And then, yeah, that's major hardcore. Browsers. Um, level one, delete your history or cache when accessing from public computers. I think nasabi to ni Sir, ano, ni Sir uh, Mike kanina. Now, if you're accessing something from a public uh, computer and you're inputting private information, one, don't. Two, if you're if you can't if you can't avoid it, delete your history, delete the cache. Um, pero sometimes yun nga tulad ng sabi ni, ni Sir kanina, wala kang magagawa kasi what if there's already malware installed? Worse. What if my keylogger installed there? Uh, I've, I've seen it happen before. Ang dali lang gumawa ng keylogger. So if you're not if you're not careful, compromise ka talaga. Delete Google Chrome. Ayan, sinabi ko na. Uh, use more privacy-oriented browsers. Brave, Safari is even better uh, than Google Chrome, if you think about it. And Firefox. Marami pang iba. Um, these are just some examples. Level 2, harden your Firefox. So actually, Firefox are, is a really good Um, privacy uh, browser, basta alam mo yung settings na ilalagay mo. So that's what hardening Firefox means. You can search on it on on start page or DuckDuckGo how to harden Firefox. Makikita nyo ano yung mga settings na kailangan nyo enable, disable para mas privacy oriented yung, um, yung Firefox nyo. And also compartmentalized browser use tulad ng sinabi ko kanina. Use one browser for um for one specific thing. For example, you can use hardened Firefox for your personal stuff, email, things that are directly related to you. And then if you don't want to be able to be tracked with your casual browsing, you store, right? You yeah. store. It's level two to three then, depending on how much commitment you're willing to give. So I haven't talked about um, VPNs and it's something that sometimes na people always uh, sinasabi ng mga tao, oh, gumamit ka ng VPN. Oh, gamit ka lang ng VPN para mas secure ka. It's somehow true. Um, for those who don't know what a VPN is, it's basically masks where you're connecting uh, your computer from. So gumagawa siya ng tunnel up to another computer. And when someone looks at your internet connection, it's as if you're connecting from that uh, server or computer. So I'm in the Philippines, I connect to a VPN server in Singapore. 
or in South Korea or in America, pag tinignan nila yung internet connection ko, it's as if doon ako kumukonek, hindi dito sa Pilipinas. So in security, in the security space, um, its advantages include hiding your IP address. Of course, mukhang doon ka nang gagaling, hindi sa actual IP address mo. And the second is encrypted yung traffic or data na tumatakbo doon sa tunnel or sa, doon sa VPN. So it's hard for people to, again, middleman at uh, tingnan yung ano tingnan yung nangyayari din sa network mo um, it's not that good anymore when it comes to preventing your identity from being known kasi there's something now called as browser fingerprinting wherein ang tinitingnan nila is yung uniqueness of your browser to actually identify you so yeah um, non security uses netflix um geo uh, geofenced materials na pwede mo lang makita sa US or so, some some other country uh, VPNs are good for that too um level one, you can use any VPN like Proton Nord iVPN um these are actually privacy respecting VPNs there are other VPNs though I don't no necessarily recommend them um just because mas private itong mga to Proton special, especially something that I use um, level 2 and 3, depending on, on how committed you are. Again, you can host and deploy your own VPN at home. Uh, and you can use Tor browser. Pang ilang beses nang lumalabas ni Tor dito sa ano na to. You know how, how well um, Tor is in terms of security since ilang beses siyang lumabas, right? Um, just a few more slides before I end. I'll, um, first, smartphones, mobile OS. Uh, we all have smartphones, I'm pretty sure. So we're all getting trapped, really. Disable tracking on your phone, please. Um, if you're if you really want some, if you really want to avoid being trapped, disable Google tracking on your phone. Activate all privacy settings. Uh, delete unwanted apps and unnecessary apps if you can. Sometimes this isn't the case, especially for vendor specific Android devices that comes with a lot of bloatware. I hate that. It, it comes with a lot of bloatware. Merong ang tatlong calculator apps kasi yung isa Samsung calculator yung iba calculator na ikaw mismo nag-download hindi mo matanggal yung isang calculator right bloatware um that's level 1 level 2 would be using a custom rom um for more privacy and security uh than common you know stock android for example or and vendor specific android you can do this i mean i, I do this i i have i i have two phones um, my second phone, my daily driver, actually runs uh, a custom ROM, not not yung default, not yung Android that comes with a with a phone. So it's more secure. I don't need a Google account to actually use my phone. Yun yung, yun yung okay dun. Um, note that not all smartphones support custom ROMs. Um, lastly, if you're really interested, you can buy a privacy security specific phone, Fairphone, EOS phones, uh, Linux phones such as Librem and Pinephone. Or use a dumb phone, right? Um, out of the box, iOS will be better for privacy than uh, typical vendor-specific uh, Android phones like Samsung, just because Apple is a bit more um, interested in that uh, privacy space. Um, stock Android or yung Androids for on Google Pixel or stockish ones, yung mga nasa Google One project ng, ng Google, will have uh, somehow similar performance with iOS. Um, Maganda with stock Android and with stockish Androids are, are they're updated regularly um, versus yung mga vendor specific ones. The most hardened siguro that you can go to again if you're an Android user like myself, use a custom ROM um, or use a Linux phone. Uh, that's, that beats all of this. That beats everything in terms of your, your smartphone. And as I mentioned, um, I run EOS on my on, on my phones because for me it's just much more secure. I don't need a Google account. Wala akong Google account na nakabit sa phone sa phone ko. Right. So maybe you're asking, what about my apps? Uh, if you don't have a Google account, paano ko download the apps? You actually can. Uh, there are so many uh, um, app store alternatives that don't require you to use your Google account to download them. Fdroid is one. I use uh, Fdroid a lot. It just hosts free and open source applications. So if you just want a free and open source phone, use F-Droid. And dami kong applications na hanap doon that are really fun. Like, um, meron akong uh, fitness band. 
um, not Fitbit, just uh, Xiaomi uh, Mi Band. Tapos meron din akong Xiaomi Scale na Smart Scale. And dati kailangan mong kumunek sa proprietary Xiaomi app which asks for your information to use it. And then I found uh, open source solutions that you can actually just connect to it without giving any information. Uh, which connects to, you know, then a band, also to the scale. Uh, if you need your Google Play, Play Store applications, there are alternatives like Aurora Store, App Lounge. It allows you to download your um a lot of a lot of applications that are coming from the Play Store. Uh, in fact, um, kahit yung mga banking apps, uh, pwede mo siya i-download sa custom ROMs. No, 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 wala masyadong problema there. Um, desktop computers and desktop OS, oversimplified version based on how least effective and most effective it is. Um, Windows, I'm sorry Windows, pero ikaw talaga yung mm, medyo bottom of the barrel here. Um, Ma- Mac OS is, performs a bit better. Um, Linux by default, um, much more secure siguro than, uh, than Microsoft. Uh, Windows. Uh, I run Linux. I've run Linux primarily for the past what ten years. Um, I've not touched Windows in that time, and wala naman ang problema ng experience over the past uh, decade. If you're really hardcore, you can use privacy-oriented Linux distros. Uh, you can look for Tail OS, uh, Tails OS, Hunix, Cubes. Yun sobrang sobrang secure non and anonymous. Ang ang even if you look at the system designs of this. Uh, privacy-oriented distros. Um, if you want offensive uh, Linux distribution, then yeah, Kali, uh, uh, Kali Linux. Of course, you should you know if you're a pen tester, for example. So what's the best OS to use? Again, that depends on you on your threat model. I can't, I won't tell you to use Linux. Of course, if you can, if you've heard of it, please try it out. Uh, it's, it's an amazing operating system. Um, Personally, sabi ko nga, I've been using it for almost 10 years now exclusively uh, on all my machines um, and I haven't had any problems or issues, right? Um, bonus. Last few slides, bonus na lang sila. One, uh, use free and open software, use free and open source software when possible. Um, why? One, you can check their source code out anytime. Pwede mo actually silang i-review. May, pwede mong makita if there are um, if there are security um, uh, issues, threats, and you can deploy it on your own, right? Hindi mo kailang mag depend sa another vendor, a third party vendor to provide the service for you. Um, payment, cash, cash is you know, at least hindi siya trap unless mark cash. Siya. Um, Privacy-based cryptocurrency like Monero. I'm I'm not advocating for cryptocurrency. I mean that's um, major ambiv- ambivalent about it. Um, I it has its pro- some pros, uh, a lot of cons, especially about energy. But if you want to be, you know, in in the space of privacy, um, uh, privacy-based crypto like Monero would be something that uh, they would you would use. Uh, note that non-private crypto like Bitcoin aren't really anonymous transactions. If I know your wallet address, kaya ko ma-identify yung transactions mo. So if I know two people's wallet addresses, kaya ko masabing si X na transfer kay Y because it's all on the blockchain, right? Um, but privacy-based crypto, hindi ka na. Um, last bonus, analog or real world. Don't use untrusted USB flash drives, please. Something na napulot nyo. Even if your friend hands it to you. Uh, check out bad USBs, rubber duckies, you know, scripts that I-plug mo lang sa, ano mo, sa USB drive, sa USB port mo, um, and you'll be compromised. Um, avoid putting personal information on public computers, as I mentioned before. Avoid using proprietary apps for uh, fitness tracking or IoT devices. Again, there are um, free and open source alternatives available. Uh, for, for like a smart home, you can check out Home Assistant. If you're building a home lab, cover your webcams, have your... Have computers, laptops with actual hardware switches to disable the mic, the camera, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth. Uh, and again, yung pinaka last, host your own stuff. Build a home lab, host your own service providers if you're really into it, right? Host your own VPN, host your own uh, 
DNS, host host everything in your own uh, setup, and you won't be tracked by someone. I mean, you limit the way that they can track you. All right, just make sure na secure yung ginagawa mo. Um, so yeah, I apologize for be uh, for 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 might be taking uh, more time than than I had hoped for. Um, but these are some resources that you can check out if you're really interested. Privacy guides, um, privacy tools at IO, and EFF Electronic Frontier Foundation. Mm, yun, maraming salamat. Again, if you have questions, um, feel free to send them on the chat or or yeah. yeah thank you.